and welcome to another vlogmas video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books I hope you're all well and having a lovely December vlogmas so far today is my December book haul um, and I've got a selection of books here two four six eight plus a stationery item which was also sent to me um, to show you and I'm quite excited about all of these some of these I've bought some have been sent some one was a gift excited um, so I'll start with one that I bought in November, at the end of November, um, this is one that I've mentioned a few times on my channel so far, and that is Turning the Tide on Plastic by Lucy Siegel. This also comes in a hardback copy, um, which is beautiful actually, a naked hardback. Um, this is the book that I keep referencing about um, wanting to cut back on my um, single-use plastic consumption next year. Um, I went to the Cambridge Literary Festival at the end of um, November, I will link the vlog down below um, with Mercedes, and um, we went. the first talk we went to was by Lucy Siegel, who is this lady here, who you may well recognise from... Um, the One Show, if you live in the UK, uh, The One Show is like a uh, magazine show, sort of talking about current affairs and things like that. And she is a reporter on that show. And her focus is plastic. Now, I loved listening to that chat uh, when I went to the Cambridge Literary Festival. And since then, um, I've been really, really thinking about um, cutting back on plastic. And I want to read this very early on in January um, in 2019 because um, one of my main things that I want to do is cut back on using single-use plastic. Now, she, she gives you sort of like the history and things like that, what's happening. And then she gives you um, a sort of how to cut back on, on plastic using new rules and new tools and she separates these into six I believe are oh, eight sorry eight R steps record reduce replace refuse reuse refill rethink and recycle um, and I'm very very much looking forward to um, addressing each of those steps in a video next year so I'll be talking about that more next year but I'm um, looking forward to reading this early on in 2019 and um and getting straight on with uh, cutting back on plastics. Uh, the next two are books that were sent to me by the publisher, which is very, very, very welcome indeed. Um, the first one is a non-fiction, they're both non-fiction, they're both non-fiction, both of them are beautiful as well. Um, and this is, oh God, I don't know how I'm gonna say this, Schadenfreud, which is the word for the joy of another's misfortune. Um, and this is written by Tiffany Watt Smith, who is a, histor a historian of emotions. Um, this is published by Welcome Collection um, in combination with po uh, Profile Books. And yeah, so it says here that Schadenfreude is a shameful tickle of enjoyment we experience when things go wrong for other people. It's the sweet satisfaction of witnessing Twitter piles up, pile a witness in Twitter, Twitter pile onto a hapless politician, the wicked glee in watching a reporter fluff her lines live on the air, the, rough, the flush of triumph when your ex-fiance cancels the, re the wedding, etc. Um, so yeah, this is, um, and it's beautiful, it's got all these uh, uh, banana skins, golden banana skins on the front. I think it just sounds a bit interesting and um, I've never read a book from a historian of emotions before, so interesting that. And then this one, which I'm super duper excited about. This is the um, the biography of Anne Lister. And it's called Gentleman Jack, uh, who was, and um, she's known as a Regency landowner, seducer, and secret diarist. And this is written by Angela Steidfeld, and it's published by Serpent's Tale. And Anne Lister is somebody I'd never heard of before, but after reading this, um, this paragraph about her, I am really excited to get into this much of her life because if I felt excited about this much of a paragraph, imagine how my whole life. So it says, Anne Lister was a Yorkshire heiress, an intrepid world traveller and a proud lesbian during a time when it was difficult sim simply to be female. She chose to remain unmarried, dressed all in black and spoke openly of her lack of interest in men. The first woman to climb Vignemar in the treacherous Pyrenees. She journeyed as far as, as Azerbaijan and slept with a pistol under her pillow. As daring as Yon, Don Juan and as passionate as Heathcliff, Anne would not be constrained by the moors of Regency society. So that sounds very good. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, it's got a quote on the back here that says, I love and only love the fairer sex and thus beloved by them in turn, my heart revolts from any love but theirs. So yeah, super excited. Uh, the next two are two that I picked up um, in a, um, uh, the cancer research bookshop uh, near where David and I live um, they have uh, two paperbacks for a pound which is unbelievable um, and I went in there and the first one I saw is um, Let It Snow by John by John but this is but this is three short stories but the reason I first ever picked it up now I used to own this I think I lent it to my sister and I don't think I ever got it back Charlotte um, so I bought myself this because it was only 50p uh, but it's a really really good 
copy. It's three um, festive novellas um, told from John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. Um, and they're all so, well, I say festive novellas, but they're, they're romance novels as well. And I feel like it was one of my first ever um, Christmas books that I ever read. So it's always got a bit of a special place in my heart. It's not like my favourite books of all time. They're YA, they're romance novels, two genres which aren't top of my pile of things. But in terms of it being festive and fun, I do enjoy this. And I feel like if you're looking for a um, a Christmas read, this is a really good one to um, to go for. So yeah, I bought my own copy because I don't know where my last one's gone. Don't think I'll get around to reading this this year. But um, yeah, it's there if I want it. And then, as I said, they were two for 50p, and I sort of, oh, no. Saved it. Um, as I said, they were two for 50p. <coughs> I've just had popcorn, I feel like there's a little grain of it caught in my throat. Um, and the next one I got, and this is not as good copy, this is quite a bashed up copy of Funny Girl by Nick Hornby. I used to bloody love Nick Hornby. Before I found my reading groove, um, and I used to read just sort of like Richard and Judy book club recommendations and Nick Hornby, um, I used to read him all the time and get all of his books out of the library, reread them. I owned quite a lot of them, um, but I didn't even know this existed. This is called Funny Girl, and it's about um, Barbara Parker, who is crowned Miss Blackpool in 1964. She ditches her tiara and is off to London to make her fortune. Now, I believe she uh, she gets into some sort of like comedy, whether it be stand-up comedy or comedy actress. And weirdly, David and I have just watched the first episode of The Marvelous Miss Maisel, which I think I'm going to really, really enjoy. Um, and this sounds a bit similar to it, although, however, set in the UK and a uh, decade later. But yeah, looking forward to, um, to reading some Nick Hornby. And um, it's been a while since I have read... Um, any of his stuff and I really um, I really used to love it so looking forward to finding out if I love it as much as I did the next thing is the next thing on the pile is my stationery but I'll leave that to the end I like to have some sort of order that's going on um, and then sent to me by the publisher was um, Farewell My Orange by Iwaki K this is um, published by Europa and Europa um, published books that are translated this has been translated um, from the Japanese and this follows two immigrants um, Salima and Sayuri um, who navigate isolation a new language and a loss on their way to lifetime friendship um, so Salima is from Nigeria and she's living as a single mother of two she works a small night shift at a supermarket in small town small night shift she works the night shift at a supermarket in small town australia she's shy she barely speaks english and she signs up for an english class offered at the local university there she meets sayuri who's come to australia from japan with her husband who's a research um associate at the local college so yes it says here when tragedy intrudes into the life of both women they look to one another for the comfort and sustenance as they forge a lasting relationship in a language that is not their own so it sounds amazing it's really short as well it is 135 pages long um, and yeah, I was really, really pleased when they sent this to me. I think this is one that they, they contacted me in the summer and said, oh, would I be interested in any books? And one of the ones I said was A Winter's Promise, which I still haven't read. I must read that. Um, and then I also said I was interested in this and they said they didn't have any finished copies. Um, so they kindly sent me one um, only recently. So yeah, it reminded me that I was into that and um, looking forward to reading that. And a winter's promise, which I must read. Um, the next one is a book that the red uh, that the um, the volunteer at work gave me. David just walked past the light. That's why I might have changed. Um, and she brought in a bag of books that she and her daughter had read and said that they weren't going to read them again. Would I be interested in them? Um, a lot of them were not my bag, but this one is by an author that I keep telling myself I must read. Um, and this is um, Smile by Roddy Doyle. Uh, Roddy Doyle is a writer, he's an Irish writer um, who writes sort of comedy books I believe. Um, the Commitments is one of his um, and two, oh that's a lie, I have read one of his, I've read Two Pints which is a novella about a conversation between two blokes having um, a, a chat over two pints in the pub um, and this is, um, I thought when I looked at this I thought it was a, um, a biography, it looked to me like a biography front but it's not, it is about um, a chap called Victor who goes every evening to Donnelly's pub for a slow pint. And one evening his drink's interrupted by a man in shorts and a pink shirt brings over his pint and sits down. He seems to know Victor's name and remember him from school. He says his name's Fitzpatrick. And Victor dislikes him on sight, dislikes to the memory that Fitzpatrick stirs up of five years being caught, taught by the Christian brothers. And he prompts other memories of Rachel, his beautiful wife who became a celebrity and of Victor's own small claim to fame as the man who says the unsayable on the radio. So what I do remember of Two Pints is that it was very, very quick to read. Um, a lot of the, the, the speeches done in this sort of way where there's no speech marks and things like that um and i'm quite interested in reading some longer roddy doyle um i feel like i'm i'm looking forward to that so that's that uh then the last one the last book i've got to show you was a um a gift that i got for my birthday from my friends um alex and kate and their 
son Charlie. Um, and <coughs> weirdly, I went to a talk by this woman in the summer holidays. Uh, in the summer holidays, I don't even have summer holidays. In the summer, um, and she was selling those books there. And I didn't buy myself one because I thought I was gonna put it on my Christmas and birthday list. And then I forgot about it and never did. And they bought it for me, so fate. Um, this is Deeds Not Words, The Story of Women's Rights Then and Now by Helen Pankhurst, who is the great granddaughter of Emmeline Pankhurst and the granddaughter of Sylvia Pankhurst. Um, Helen herself is a women's rights activist and senior visitor to Care International. She works in the UK and Ethiopia. Um, and this is about women getting the vote and how long it took there and the history of um, women getting the vote. And um, she was an amazing, when I went to watch her talk, she was amazing. And um, I left there feeling really um, um, educated by her and um, something that I wanted to further. And um, I'm looking forward to further in it when reading this by herself so yes very very good and then the last thing someone got um the these guys at clever fox contacted me um towards the end of november i think and asked me if they would like if i would like to be sent a clever fox planner i'm, f I'm having trouble getting it out of the box um and i said yes i didn't realize it would come in this lovely lovely box they asked me what color i'd like i said orange there was a whole host of um colors but orange was my fave um and i didn't really look much into it now you may know i um i semi well no i didn't I started bullet journaling last year, loved it, as is the case with many of my projects, loved it for the first few months, um, and then it just sort of teetered off, mainly because of the setup of stuff, like, although it's really nice and you can um, customise it yourself, and I did find joy in sort of like sitting down for an hour and doing, and doing that, but I just, it's the setup of stuff, because it's all um, done in squares, you have to set up your own stuff, so with the Clever Fox Planner, there is a section for that, but there's also sections which are completely set up for you, which is also a joy. So um, what I also like about it, and I've literally just, I received it and didn't look much into it apart from just now. Um, it's got here, this is the first double page in the book and it says my gratitude and self-awareness, I'm grateful for, what am I passionate about and what brings me joy in life, um, skills to learn and habits to adopt this year, my affirmations, a vision board, um, goals for the year, which is um, put into sections of health, business and career, friends and family significant and other romance finance personal development fun and recreation spiritual then goals more goals here mind map and then it goes on to months which are already set out which as i said took a long time to set up and then it goes into a year's worth of weeks and years so that was another thing that took me a long time to set up and I was trying to be really original with it when I was doing my bullet journaling and trying to make it look different every week and using washi tape and sometimes it absolutely I really used it but this being set up already is really really helpful and then as I said the last section I wouldn't say the last half but the last section is all these dots you can't even see but like bullet journal dots um which would you could use for sort of like so one thing that I did have in my bullet journal, which I love doing, was um, making a list of the series that I wanted to watch. And then as I was watching the series, colouring in a little box, I made a list of all the books that I'd read. I'd read this year. That this went as far as like July. Um, all the books that I'd read that year, um, all of the um, the films that I'd watched this that year, and it was really nice to keep that information somewhere. Um, so with this, I feel like this is much more likely for me to continue it because the hard work's done for me in times of in terms of setting up for the year um that's already done and I can also use this to plan my YouTube videos I'm very much a planner in terms of like having big spreadsheets and big planners and stuff like that um, you also get like a little section of how to use it you get some stickers um which are, denote different things and yeah I'm really looking forward um to getting into it now I have, do have a 10% off code if anyone wants to use it I will link all the information down below if you're interested in getting yourself a clever fox planner um and I'm looking forward to, to sort of sitting down and, and getting on with that so those are are the books that I have got from the month of December. I hope you are all having a lovely December. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what books that you've managed to get your hands on in December. Let me know um, if you're planning on bullet journaling or anything like that. If you've ever heard of Clever Fox before, I'd never heard of Clever Fox before. Um, and I will see you all again soon for another booktube video, vlogmas video. Bye!